हेलो स्टूडेंट्स अ वाम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू एट अराइजर टैलेंट एंड आई एम योर फिजिक्स टीचर क्रीना वेलकम्स यू ऑल सो प्रीवियसली वी हैव अ डिस्कशन अबाउट द मैग्नेटिक इफेक्ट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक करंट एंड इन अवर लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव अ डिस्कशन अबाउट द ट्रांसफॉर्मर सो uh in continuing with this lectures we are actually discussing the electric electric devices we are using for lightning purposes so there are many things which are lightning around us whether it is tube light whether it is lights and we can see a wide a wide variety of lights uh, around us so basically these lights are brightening just because of the electric supply or electrical apparatus electrical things which are used behind that so actually the electric components or electric devices which are working behind that has a very uh, typical construction and you have to understand the working for this uh, understanding of the work is working is very important because these type of the questions can be asked in your cbsc exams and this question can be asked in such a way that explain the construction and principle and working of a uh, etc etc device whatever you have so we have a discussion about the transformer till now but in our today's lecture we are going to discuss our new topic that is about the generator now this is a very common term you are aware about you already all of you have a idea about the, what is actually the generator is generator we are sometimes using in industries factories we are using at our homes and in the marriages too you have seen that the uh, behind the tanks generator is working so what actually this generator is so generator is actually a device which is used to convert mechanical energy into electrical energy it means it is a device which is going to convert the mechanical energy into electrical energy that is everywhere there is a lightning around you so in our today's lecture we are going to start our new topic that is about generator this is about generator now generator is basically of two types one is known as ac generator first generator is our ac generator and second generator is our dc generator so ac generator is actually known as dynamo so another name for ac generator is dynamo and this dc generator is actually known as dc dynamo this is known as dc dynamo so ac generator will be known as our dynamo and dc generator is known as dc dynamo and what is generator generator is actually a device which is used to convert mechanical energy into electrical energy so generator is a device used to convert mechanical energy into electrical energy so this device actually converts mechanical energy into electrical energy so this is the generate uh, definition of the generator we have now in our this category firstly we will discuss about the ac generators that is dynamo then we will proceed to our next topic that will be our dc generator now ac generator is a alternating current generator this is having a same operation it is used to convert the mechanical energy energy into electrical energy but the thing is it is again working on the principle of electromagnetic induction now what is electromagnetic induction electromagnetic induction is a process in which if there is a change in the flux linkage with the coil then there will be the induced emf in the circuit so that's why again these all devices are working on the same principle that is electromagnetic induction and in this devices the direction of the current you will find in accordance with the flamings left hand rule we have a discussion about it in our previous classes so now let's begin with the topic that is our ac generator so now our first category is about 
एसी जनरेटर सो दिस डिवाइस इज अगेन कन्वर्टिंग द मैकेनिकल एनर्जी इनटू इलेक्ट्रिकल एनर्जी बट वी हैव टू डिस्कस ऑन व्हाट प्रिंसिपल इट इज एक्चुअली वर्किंग सो द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ एसी जनरेटर इज अगेन इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक इंडक्शन it works on principle of electromagnetic induction it means when flux linked with the coil changes there will be induced emf in the circuit and the direction of the current will be given by the flaming's left hand rule direction of current is given by flaming's rule so this is all about the principle of the ac generator we have now let's move forward to discuss about the construction of this ac generator so now we are going to deal with the construction of ac generator so our next topic is about construction of ac generator now in this ac generator we have basically four to five parts so we have to discuss these four to five parts that what actually they are working is so the first part we have to consider is about the field magnets first thing in ac generator is about the field magnets second thing is about armature second thing is armature we have third thing is about slip rings and the fourth thing is about the brushes we have so these are the things you can see in the ac generator the diagram of which i can draw now so these are the four basic things you can see in the ac generator the first one is about the field magnets so actually the magnets you have to take on are the permanent magnet and generally we are taking here the horseshoe magnet having the north and south pole so in case of the field magnet what we are going to take in its construction we are taking the horseshoe magnet we are taking horseshoe magnet and these magnets is having north and south pole these are having north and south pole so this is about the field magnet now the second thing is armature armature is actually a core which is made up of the soft iron and having a 
uh, insulation of the copper wires on it and this armature is basically placed between the north and south pole of a magnet and this is connected with a shaft and shaft is connected with the armature and further this is connected with the slip rings and the brushes so what is armature armature is actually made up of soft iron this is made up of the soft iron having turns of copper wire and connected to the shaft so it is basically made up of the soft iron we have so this is all about the armature we have now what is slip rings there are the two rings we will take in the construction of the ac generator and they can be denoted as s1 and s2 this will be discussed now and brushes brushes actually we are taking here is actually the carbon brushes the brushes we will take in the diagram is actually the carbon brushes so the carbon brushes is basically used in the construction of ac generator so this is the whole things we are considered here in the construction of ac generator so just copy it from here so we can see the diagrammatic part of this generator so now let's move to the next part that is about the construction of the ac generator
so this is a basic diagram to understand the ac generator here so what we have taken in this diagram firstly i have told you that we have to consider the two filled magnets we have to take the two filled magnets and we are taking a strong magnets here and the magnets are our horseshoe magnet so in this horseshoe magnet what i have to do i have to draw the two poles one is north pole and one is south pole so this is the two filled magnets i have taken here now in this construction what we have taken we have taken a armature armature here is actually made up of the soft iron core which is placed between both the poles of a magnet so we have the two poles of a magnet north and south and i am just placing this armature here this is armature this is our armature a b c d this armature which is actually made up of the soft iron core is placed between the north and south pole of a magnet now in between this armature you can see that there is a line passing i can draw this line with the yellow color uh this is passing here so this is what this yellow colored part is our shaft what is this this is our shaft and this shaft is connected here with a handle this shaft is placed in the armature and this shaft is actually connected with the handle here now you can see here this is about the armature we have taken the next part is our slip rings we have taken two slip rings here these slip rings are actually s1 and s2 and these are connected with the ends of the armature here so i have mentioned here s1 and s2 so these s1 and s2 are nothing but they are slip rings these are our slip rings and you can see that these are actually connected to the bottom part of the armature this is the end of the armature and the slip rings are connected here now next thing is our brushes to these slip rings we have connected two brushes here and these two brushes are actually b1 and b2 this is our b1 and this is our b2 this b1 and b2 are the two carbon brushes we are taking in this diagram so i can write here b1 and b2 are our brushes so this is our brushes and you can see that this is not connected to the part of the armature we have these are connected separately here and from this brushes b1 and b2 we are connecting the supply from here so this is our supply supply is connected to the brushes b1 and b2 so this will be our electrical supply so this is the basic diagram to understand the ac generator we have and we have mentioned the name of the armature as abcd so this is the whole picture of ac generator you can see here so just copy that diagram so i can explain you the working of this ac generator that how it actually works so just copy it from here so now let's discuss about working of ac generator that how it how it actually works so our next thing is about working of ac generator now you can see in this diagram we have just placed this armature abcd in the horizontal position so i can assume that this armature is placed horizontally like this i have placed this armature like this if this armature is placed horizontally in this direction and i am labeling it a b c d if i am going to move this armature a b c d in the anti clockwise direction anti clockwise means opposite to the clock direction so 
this is going to rotate in this direction this is going to rotate in this direction so this is our a b c d and i am going to rotate it in the anti clockwise direction like this now if it is moving in the anti clockwise direction like this you can see that a b will come in the down and c d will raise upwards a b will come down and c d will be coming in the upper part if a b is lying in the bottom part you can see that this armature part will cut the field lines at near the north pole of a magnet so what will happen here if you are rotating this a b c d in the anti clockwise direction you can see that a b will come down and c d will come upward and when a b will come downward it is going to cut the magnetic field lines near the north pole and this c d is going to cut the magnetic field lines near the south pole so this is the first point i am getting from here so what will happen in the step number 1 in step number 1 armature abcd is rotated in anti clockwise direction if it is rotated in anti clockwise direction what will happen ab will come in the downward portion and cd is going to be in the upward portion so ab will be in downward and cd will be going to be in upward so these two things happen here ab will be in upward ab will be in downward and cd will be in upward if ab will be in downward it is near to the magnetic no north pole of the magnet so it is going to cut the magnetic field lines of the north and cd is going to cut the magnetic lines of the south so in the next point magnetic lines near north is cut by ab and magnetic lines near south will be cut by cd so this is actually happening here now if the magnetic flux linked with the coil changes you know that there will be the induced emf in the circuit and induced emf is going to develop the induced current in the circuit and how you will find the induced current direction it can be find accordingly with the fleming's rule now according to the fleming's rule if the coil is rotated or if the armature is rotated in the anti clockwise direction we can see that the current is going to flow from b to a and d to c if it is rotated like this the current is going to flow from b to a and d to c this is found in accordance with the fleming's left hand rule we have now so the direction of the induced current will be from direction of current will be from b to a and d to c and this is found in accordance with the fleming's rule so this is in accordance with the fleming's rule now if it is moving in the anti clockwise direction the direction of the current will be opposite it will be from b a d c so i can find here the direction of the current is b a d c so this will be the direction of the current in the first case that is our anti clockwise movement so this is our step number 1 for what we are doing here now in our step number 2 what we actually are doing we are just reversing the polarity it means we are placing the ab part in the right side and cd part is shifted to the left side here so in our step number 2 you have to copy this step so i can write here to explain you the further part just copy it from here
so what will happen here after half revolution after half revolution so this will be our step number 2 after half revolution the direction is reversed the direction is reversed in such a way this ab is appearing in the right side and cd will be shifted to the left side it means if it is shifted to the right side now ab will come upward and cd will go downwards so after revolution ab is shifted to right side and cd is going to shift in the left side so this will be going to happen here if this happens you can see that ab is coming in the upward direction and cd is going to be in the downward part so ab will be in upward part and cd will be in downward part now it means we have just reversed the polarity here so you can analyze that if you reverse the polarity of these plates there will be the reverse polarity of the emf you are getting and there will be the reverse polarity of the induced current in the circuit it means in the one cycle if you are keeping the positive polarity of the terminal you will get the other direction and if you are reversing the polarity in the other half part of the cycle you will get the other conditions so in this case now if ab is shifted upwards and cd is in downwards so what will happen you will get the opposite direction of the current in this picture so it means now the direction of the current will not from bdc it will be from cdab you are just getting a reverse direction in this case so it means if you are just reversing the polarities in the next half of the cycle you will get the opposite direction of the current so direction of current will be reversed in the half cycle now in the first case we have a direction of the current ba dc now it is going to change from cd ab so we can say that now current is going to be flow like this in the second half cycle we have we are getting the clockwise value of the current in this diagram now it is also in accordance with the flemings uh, left hand rule now you can see that the, here are the two cycles we have considered in the first cycle we have kept ab in the left hand side and in the second side you have kept ab in the right hand side now if you change the polarities you will get the different different values of the current and induced emf in both the parts of the circuit so if the polarity is reversed you will get the opposite direction of the current and if the polarities of the revolution will be considered reversed in the second part again you will get the reverse value of the current in this case so it means in simplest form i can say that if we are reversing the polarities we will get a two different different values of the current here so this is all about the ac generator we have seen here it is basically working in the two cycles of the revolution one in first part you have to kept ab in the lower part and in the next cycle you have to get kept ab in the upper part now this is about all about the ac generator but one more thing we have to consider here that is about the frequency of ac generator so the next thing is about frequency of ac generator now frequency basically means the number of cycles completed in one second so frequency is actually the number of cycles completed in one second
So, according to the working of the AC generator, we can say that the frequency of the AC generator will be that how many times it is changing its polarity. So, if it is changing its polarity two times, we can say that the number of cycles completed are two. So, in case of AC generator, number of polarities it is changing. So, in India, the frequency of the AC source we are getting here, it means the light, the fan, the AC, which is all running, they are running at the 50 hertz frequency. We in India, we have provided a 50 hertz frequency. So, in case frequency of AC in India is 50 hertz. Frequency of AC in India is 50 hertz. It means in India, 100 times the polarity is changing in one second. 50 hertz frequency means this polarity is changing 100 times in one second. So, polarity is changing 100 times in one second. That's why the frequency of AC supply in India is 50 hertz. So, you have to remember this point. This is for your general information. So, this is all about the frequency of AC generator. So, this topic, the frequency of AC generator is completed here. I hope you all guys have uh, understand this topic because this is again a very important topic from your CBSC exam point of view because a theoretical question uh, may be asked from this part of this. Now, in this session, we have discussed only one type of the generator that is AC generator. So, in our next lecture, we will going to discuss about our DC generators and one more electric component or electric device that is about the motors. So, this lecture is over today. Thank you so much and have a nice day. For this, watching more videos like this, you have to subscribe our channel. So, just search Arise the Talent on the Google and just like our videos, subscribe our videos and get more and more information. Thank you so much and have a nice day.